Hey YouTube, how's it going? It's Quinton here and welcome to tutorial number eight. And in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you guys how to add images to your website. So if you take a look at um, my htdocs folder over here, I've got my index file and then I've gone ahead and added two images into this directory. So we've got a picture of me in winter and then a picture of me in winter, but this one's labeled small and I'll explain why. Uh, later in the tutorial. Uh, so let me go ahead and open up this image uh, and you can see that this is just a picture of me but this is the picture that I want to add to my website. So uh, I'm going to close that and uh, let's open that or yeah let's code that into my website. So um, to do that we're going to add an image tag into our uh, document over here. So I'm going to open up an image tag by typing IMG and that stands for image. Uh, and if I hit enter and just auto complete that, you'll see that we automatically get this attribute called SRC, which stands for image source. And this is uh, how we tell the browser what image we want to add to our website. So we need to put in that image name within the source. Uh, so let me just open up Finder again. And because my images are in the same folder as my index file, uh, all I need to do is take this image name and copy that and paste it into my source. Uh, make sure that you have your file extension over here. I think uh, some guys, um, if I just say get info in Mac or if you go to properties in Windows, uh, you can check what the file extension is. So in this case, I can see it is a kind JPEG, which means obviously we need .jpg uh, in the file extension over there, All right? Um, just make sure you get your file extension right and make sure that it's there because sometimes you could uh, maybe click hide extension and then it doesn't show up um, in the, uh, what do you call this, Finder or Windows Explorer, right? So let me go ahead and save this now and come back over to the browser and hit refresh. And now you can see my image has been added, but it is absolutely massive. So I've got to kind of scroll around. Uh, so that is quite an intense zoom up of me. You can see nostril hair. Ew. <laughs> um, but yeah, that is uh, uh, the picture of me added. Uh, right now it's a little bit big. So let's take a look at how I can resize this. And I also want to talk about some other attributes of it. So uh, to resize the image in HTML, we can add uh, an extra attribute called width. There is also one for height, so you can uh, choose either one, although it is recommended to have both. Uh, and I'm just going to set width equal to 1,200 pixels. I'm gonna leave height blank for now just to show you guys what will happen. Let me hit save, come back here and hit refresh. And well, now you can see that I've got uh, my image displaying much, much smaller, uh, but it's scaled, right? It's scaled uniformly. Uh, we didn't, we didn't uh, stretch or scale, scale the image in any way. Uh, we scaled it, we didn't stretch it uh, or warp it, right? Now, if I put in a value for the height um, and it happens to be the wrong value, like I know the right value is gonna be 800 pixels, uh, but if I put in a wrong value like 400, uh, what that'll do is then squash the image to fit the wrong dimensions. So let's come back here and hit refresh. And as you can see, now I'm looking a little bit squashed. I don't like that. Obviously we wouldn't wanna do that to any of our images. So make sure that you always have the correct values. Uh, and in this case, I know that um, this image, uh, this image of me is actually 5,472 pixels in width and 3,648 pixels in height. Um, and if you scale this uniformly, I just happen to do my homework, it'll be 1,200 by 800. Uh, so let's hit refresh. And well, yeah, now the image is displaying and it's not warped, it's not uh, stretched or anything like that, that's good. But the problem is that this image, 
uh, is still this 5,472 pixels in uh, width, right? Uh, and if I right click on this and say uh, get info, uh, you'll see at the top corner over here, it says that the image is 4.7 megabytes uh, in size. Now that is absolutely massive. If you are creating a website with images that are this size, uh, it's gonna make the website load extremely, extremely slowly and it's also gonna use up your bandwidth on your server. So if you are limited to a certain amount of bandwidth, depending on where you're hosting, uh, having a really big image like this is really gonna chase away your visitors and waste your money. Uh, so instead of uh, using really big unedited images, you should always use a program like Photoshop. So I use Photoshop uh, just to resize your image and make it the correct size and also optimize it for web. Uh, and that's what I've already done with this image, winter me small. So if I uh, come back over to the browser and I change the name here to winter me small dot JPEG, um, and I can get rid of these height and width attributes just to show you uh, right now. Okay, it's not actually gonna change anything because uh, that was the exact size of my image, these 1,200 by 800 pixels. Uh, but yeah, now it is loading a much, much smaller image. If I um, just get info here and I take a look at it, it is, 185 kilobytes in size. So this, uh, well, that is a mosquito biting me in the arm. Uh, um, so this image is 185 kilobytes in size, and that is obviously much, much smaller. Uh, our website is gonna load a lot faster. We're saving uh, data, so you know uh, we're not gonna run out of uh, traffic space or, or data space on our server anytime soon. And uh, yeah, it's just better to make sure you optimize your images for that reason. Um, and uh, now that I've spoken about that, let's get the last attribute out the way because if you uh, run this in a HTML validator, which I talked about a few tutorials ago, uh, it's gonna give you an error. And that is because all images need an extra attribute, which is the alt attribute and you've got to set this equal to a value. So uh, what the alt attribute is, is basically text that um, uh, dis, uh, basically explains this image. So uh, if for some reason I made a spelling mistake and my image doesn't show up, uh, let's just yeah take away those two L's, come back here, hit refresh. You can see my image is not showing up anymore because I made a mistake um, in the name at least if I've got some text here in the alt attribute, uh, the text will show up. It also um, allows certain things like Google's uh, search engines to uh, figure out what was actually in this image. So let's just uh, make the alt uh, attribute Quinton, what in winter, not water, winter. And uh, that at least explains uh, what was in this image. Uh, so right now let's hit refresh and you can see my alt attribute shows up over here um, because I still have spelling mistakes in my uh, image name. But if I fix the image name to not have spelling mistakes anymore and come back here and hit refresh, the image shows up, but um, if certain search engines like Google's, Google's uh, search engine can still tell what is in this image by looking at the alt attribute. Um, so yeah, that is all I have for you. Actually, there's one more thing. <laughs> uh, right, so remember I was talking about width and height and I was talking about how these are recommended. Uh, the other thing is, uh, I'm probably gonna have to get rid of the alt attribute to show you this, but if I make uh, a spelling mistake in the image name, uh, the one thing about this is the browser still knows how much space to um, it's set aside for the image. So let me go ahead and save this and come back here and refresh. And you can see that we've got the, this uh, border displaying right now. And that's just because the browser knows uh, to set aside 1,200 pixels by 800 pixels for the image that I've chosen. And the reason why it knows this is because we put these two attributes here. So even though the image isn't showing up, 
the layout of our website shouldn't get messed up because the browser is saving this space. Um, and so that's why those two uh, attributes are recommended, but you actually should have all four to be on the safe side. So let me go ahead and save this now. And now I'll end the video. I just wanna send a shout out to my sponsors at Dev Mountain. They run a coding bootcamp with courses on iOS development, UX design, and web development. And they can teach you everything you need to know to get a job within this field. And they'll do it within 12 weeks, which I think is a rather impressive timeline. So go ahead and check out their website. The link is in the video description. And if you do contact them, make sure to tell them that I sent you. Hey, thanks for staying until the end of the video. That really means a lot to me. Now, while you're still here, there are a few things that you can do to help. First of all, if you haven't already, subscribe and watch another one of my videos. And if you wanna help me make more content more often, or if you feel that my content is just worth paying a little bit of money towards, you can check me out on Patreon. You can also check me out on social media. I will leave the links next to me. So go ahead and click on something and I'll see you guys next time.